I want to greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I love the song, sound of this guitar. But you, you play it too softly, but it's very beautiful. There are some people that don't like it. I love it. The guitar very well played. With this chore of the guitar. There are people that don't like it. You, whenever I'm here, you can play because I like it. One of those old people, but not that old. Not that old. <laughs> it's not that old person. I like it. There in Brazil, when I leave, I have a country music group <laughs> that that, that go with me whenever I go. One day I went to a church after they finished singing. That that that. The country music guys, they got converted. No, no, no. They they sing the same, but country music, well sang, it's very good, isn't it? And I'm not from, from Goiás, I stayed in Rio, in Brazil. Oh well. So now, while sitting, so if we want to play, don't, don't be afraid of me. I can play because the guitar very well played. I think that you were doing this l that day. You know, were you who were doing the, the chores, the chores, the chores, yeah, I think it was here, it was not on the same, I think it was Thursday, Thursday or Tuesday, very well, so let us open up our Bibles in the book of uh, the Song of Solomon, Song of Solomon, chapter 8. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, from verse 6. Song of Solomon, 8, 6. We're going to read from 6. Here, did you open it? We're going to read. Until seven, six and seven. I preached this many times during on marriage and weddings, but today is not a wedding. Is it there already? Set me as a seal upon your heart as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. If a man would give for love all the wealth of his life, his house, it would be utterly despised. The Bible, it, when you study the Bible, of course, there we have uh, poetic verses. Psalms, and their poetry. Not on every psalm is poetic. The greatest psalmist out of the 150 psalms written, there was one author that alone, he wrote 73. Do you know who wrote them? The father of whom wrote this. Who was? David. The psalms are books. Look, there were more people upstairs. <laughs> What was these people doing upstairs? Oh, let us let them arrive here. The adolescents are now here. This group is a good group. Because in fact we need to leave a memory, us. See adolescents, we the one who are you part of the youth, you leave the memory to the elders. They are going to die. So we need to keep the memory of the kingdom of the, the Lord, what he has done. Very well. 
So the Bible has the books called Poetics, Psalms, Proverbs. It's amazing as it might sound. It's poetry. Ecclesiastes is poetry. And out of all the books written by Solomon, the most beautiful poetry is from the book of Songs of Solomon. For a very long time, nobody would understand the, the book of Songs of Solomon. They thought that Solomon had described in a poetic way uh, utopia, so um, an impossible love, or something that would only exist in fiction. So it was a description of a love that was impossible. It was something that was impossible. He didn't even he understand. He didn't know why he was writing it because it didn't exist. It felt like the illustrations here were illustrations of, uh, how can I say, of fiction. He didn't know that he was prophesizing, right? And Solomon. There is something very interesting about Solomon that in the Bible he is a, a symbol, the whole Bible, as well as the father, uh, as well as his father David. There he was a symbol. David David was in the Old Testament. He was in what he didn't see, he was a symbol of Jesus Christ. He is, his life is described in certain situations that bring us to the ministry of Jesus and Solomon is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, right? That's why during the entrance when Benaiah he enters in Jerusalem by a request of the prophet Nathan that said to David before he died the king is not Adonai the king is Solomon and Solomon had no right because was, he was not the firstborn, he was on the latest children of David. In fact, who had the right was going to be Adonai. Because the other older brothers had died. The oldest was Adonai. And had all the characteristics to be the king. Or by human reason. So Nathan tells David, uh, the king is not Adonai, the king is Solomon. So then in Jeol, they place Nathan, Benaiah, and Abiatar, they place Solomon over the, uh, David's donkey. They enter into Jerusalem shouting and blowing the trumpet and saying, leave the king Solomon. This was the type of the Holy Spirit in the book of Songs, he, des he describes a love. All the poetry of the book of uh, Song of Solomon describes a relationship of love between a man and a woman, between the groom and the bride, the husband and wife. But it seems to be something so, so difficult to understand because men in his own reason has a description of love and sometimes he gets confusing but in relationship of man a uh, human relationship it, it runs out it ends with time people say time passed and the love extinguished but this love here is different love is over sometimes love is finished it's, it's over because why because when you get married everything is I remember of, um, of a couple in my church. <coughs> he was almost 90 years of age and she was 86. She had a problem. She went, had to go and be operated. And even went and saw her surgery. It was a surgery room, very difficult. And she was recovering in her bedroom and, and the children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. And I arrived and what called my attention was that the old man, her husband, was always upset. So then I arrived and said, Hey, how are you doing? And he was quiet. 
So then, how are you, uh, Miss? So what is going on with him? I don't know. How ever since I arrived, I'm, I'm okay, but he is upset. And the daughter, oh, the the daughter is all around six years of age, young like this. So then, they ask, what is going on? And he quiet and upset. And I was beside him, and he was very sad. So then later, one of them came and put her hand on his head and said, Are you sad? And he said, No. So what is going on? He looked to his daughter and said, He pointed to his wife and was in bed and said, She did, doesn't love me anymore. And she looked at me and said, What happened, Daddy? She asked about everybody else, but f about myself. She doesn't love me anymore. So then she and her dad said, no, no way. You know that I always loved and Everybody was laughing. And I was looking. 60 years of marriage. Then I have more, the same vigor of youth, the characteristics, the physical appearance. You know, what was left of that? Of every, all of it. A noble feeling. But is it possible that this feeling is uh, out of human reason? No, it's not. You know what was the secret of that couple? A little bit of the love that was there was not a human love, was not rational. It was the love of God. And this love that is described here in a poetic way, prophetically, by Solomon, it speaks of the love of the Church of Jesus. The Church that loves Jesus and Jesus loves His Church. So when Jesus prophetically speaks of this Church, He says, put me as a seal upon your heart. So in other words, His love was definitive. It never changed. So when the King sealed something, Nobody could change it. Nobody could change it. Nobody could touch it. Solomon was king. And he says, And seal the king. Put me as a seal upon your heart. So you know the words. Because the love is more powerful than death. So you know the words. What an amazing thing. That's why in the Old Testament, the New Testament, it says, nor the width or depth or width, you know, the present and what is to come, nothing can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. So th th this a language is poetic, of course, but it's very deep of a relationship between the church, faithful church, true church, and the Lord Jesus. I'm not speaking of uh, just about any church. I'm speaking, I'm speaking about the faithful church. And it says the phone. The love is stronger than death. It was. Because he prophesied in the fall. The love is more powerful than death. Death did not retain this love. Death did not, did not withstood this, this love. That's why he overcame death when he resurrected. And love was victorious against death. So this love, which is his love, is manifest in the resurrection. And this love is greater than death. Because it is his love. His love, he overcame death. And that's why the Bible says that in the same way that he resurrected, we will resurrect as well. Because this love was passed on to us. It is interesting that it says, it's hard. Jealousy. It's interesting, right? This thing about jealousy. People say that jealousy is something that, you know, sometimes. Why was this here? It's interesting that the Bible itself says something about the Holy Spirit. It speaks of the image of Solomon, which is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that uh, God is jealous. I don't know if you have had an experience. It's possible. Who is faithful and love God 
will understand what I'm saying. Have you thought about going to a place and sat down and maybe it was a party and you felt uncomfortable, very upset? What am I doing here? And you go back and go forth and drink beer and you said, I'm not feeling good here. And you find out an excuse to leave. You know why? Because the spirit that is in you is jealous of you with what is happening around you, which is the world, the things of the world. The world is already in the, in, in the evil, and God is jealous. That's why He reacts, because there's a love inside of you that's very strong. And you understand this. Who doesn't have it is because that person doesn't have this love. Oh, nobody's saying, I'm going to drink a beer at all. You don't have this love. You don't have. Nobody needs to be uh, in a sentinel, uh, vigilant against, you know, trying to see if you are doing good or not. Bad Christian, you don't need to be watching. Whatever he needs to do, something. Oh, the trumpet will sound and will leave, be left behind. Well. Somebody needs to be left behind. You're laughing. It's in the Bible. The book of Psalms says the following. It says this in um, chapter 5. The book of Psalms says this. I knocked at the door of my beloved and he didn't answer. Went to the street and the, the guards picked me up and beat me up. And that's, what, that's written in the book of Songs of Solomon. There's a people that are going to stay, be left behind. Is in the Bible. The Bible says this. Jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire. It's the fire of the altar that burns in your heart. The many waters could not erase this love. Something very interesting. Uh, one day I was in my clinic. There was a sister from the church that was very ill. She was at home already. She was a, a terminal uh, person. You know, she was 30 few years of age, but she was she had a cancer. And she was already on a wheelchair. She was in a very bad shape. And one afternoon. The phone rang and uh, the girl arrived and she said, Doctor, that person wants to speak with you. And I had a patient, but I could not simply not give attention to her. So um, you excuse me, but I need to speak with this woman. So then I pick up, picked up the phone and it was her. And she told me, hey, I miss you very much. She was in a wheelchair. No hair because she was going through chemotherapy living, taking morphine every six hours because she was going through a lot of pain. Then I asked her, what do you need? And she said, I'm very happy. Very good. And she said, you know why? Because Jesus loves me. I looked to my patient. I left. Can you excuse me? I went to the bathroom to cry. Lord, what is this? patient, a terminal patient with terrible pains and that situation calling me and saying that she's happy because God loves her. What kind of love is this? What kind of love? This love is not, it's not a love it's based on reason. It's not a love that we see in a person, a love that you, you feel, you can see, touch. It's not passion. This is the love. This is the love described here. Many waters cannot quench love. So the many trials cannot erase this. Tribulation, the anguish. There are people that are going through terrible ang sufferings. We see many times. You cannot erase this love. Nor can the floods drown it. All the wealth of his if a man would give for love 
all this wealth in his house, it would be utterly despised. The many waters cannot quench love. If a man would give for love all the wealth of his love for, it would be utterly despised. You know why? Because this love here, it does it run it does not run out with time because it's eternal. It does not run out with the changes and the trials, things of this life, because it's perfect. And because he is inside of us. So Solomon describes something that he doesn't know what he's saying. He didn't know what, what he was saying. He didn't understand what he was saying. It was a utopia. And that's why the majority of the theologians never understood what the book of Song of Solomon was. Never. There's nothing written in the book of Solomon's, Song of Solomon's. For the first ten years of the existence of uh, the Church of Maranatha, a group fasting. It was very long fastings. He would fast 72 hours without eating or drinking, straight. And one day in the meeting, pastors, early dawn, I said, I'm going to give you a gift. And we didn't understand. We wanted to understand what was this gift going to be about. And times passed by and he said, I'm going to review on this work of the Lord, the Spirit. I'm going to reveal a secret that I never revealed anybody. And we were all very curious. What is the God going to, to show that was never revealed to anybody? And we were waiting for it. So now I need a period of fasting and I will speak. So then after a few days, in another meeting, the Lord said, I'm going to open up in this work of the Spirit, the book of Songs of Solomon. Nobody has ever interpreted the book of Solomon. People, you see people interpreting the book of Songs of Solomon, preaching for couples' meetings. It's an absurd. It's a pastor that preached a while ago. The, the pastor that speaks about the belly button, who never put wine on the belly button of his wife. It's crazy. He's crazy. You know what? The book of Solomon is something that is very deep, is wonderful. It describes not the flesh, fleshly love, but is it is a love that is hard to understand. This love that is spoken about out there. It runs out with death. It runs out with many things. But this one described here, it doesn't. This one is more powerful than death. This one uh, this love didn't allow Jesus to remain in the tomb. He rose him from the dead. And that's what Paul, in one of his, Paul says many beautiful things. Very beautiful thing. That's why people say that Paul was like a philosopher. He says many interesting things. And says he said the following. When this body of mine, right, when this body which is perishable will be covered with the incorruptibility <coughs> will be fulfilled the word death was uh, swallowed by victory this is beautiful because death was swallowed by victory what victory was the vic victory of the resurrection of the third day is a victory that guarantees us us as well because it was the first fruit. And the same that he was he resurrected, we also we resurrect with him, after him, of course. So when the trumpet is sounded, whoever is alive will be raptured. And he died in whoever died in Christ will resurrect with him. The many waters put me as a seal uh, on your heart. 
the seal upon your arm is, is a friend is beside you the love seals and his friend is beside you there's not a friend better than him I'll put a seal upon your heart a seal upon your arm for love is as strong as death jealousy as cruel as the grave many waters cannot quench love nor can the flood drown it if a man would give for love all the wealth of his house it will be utterly despised Amen this love that is in the faithful church is in you the faithful church Amen God has given a vision showing 
right? A necessity, our struggle. Sometimes we think the year is coming to an end. We're afraid of the next year, right? The world is filled with phobias, right? We don't need to have phobias because we trust in the Lord. His vision speaks of the the stormy sea. And you know about the boat. The boat is the kingdom is what the Lord is doing. Remember the boat of Jesus? Peter tried to walk outside of the boat and walked a little bit and then he sank. It speaks of fellowship and living together. The boat is a fellowship and he's in fellowship. We have our victories. We should not be uh, stayed isolated, stay home. No, in fellowship, we overcome our trials. And the love unites us more and more. Amen. What, can, what else can we sing? I wanted to hear the guitar. I didn't hear it. What? What? We love. Is it? No. How is it? <laughs> so let's go.
Lord, we praise your name for your great love. Reveal to us through the wonderful operation of your Holy Spirit, Lord. We praise you at this moment in your name. We say the wonderful grace of the L Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Church may be seated, my bread. There's a vigil tomorrow, 10.30. The place there. No, you should not just eat and leave. If you eat and leave, you're going to pray so you can feel sick. One week in bed.